Here is another easy roof framing video and in this video we are going to be using a concrete slab or building foundation to lay out our gambrel roof so that we can measure all of the components we need to cut the roof rafters and to build the walls. And I would also like to point out that this same thing can be done on the second floor or any floors above. It does not need to be done on a building foundation if you're going to have multiple stories. And I am going to put a list of videos in the video description box that might be helpful if you're going to build a different type of gambrel roof. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're basically going to need four sections, and that would be two of the same sections on one side of the center and two of the same sections on the other side, along with two sections going in this direction. So this will represent the top of the roof. And then this line right here will represent one section of the roof. This line right here will represent another. And you can always play around with these numbers if you don't like what you see or if you're looking for a different angle. And I do need to point out that we are going to be using this line right here. We're going to snap a straight line with a chalk box and try to avoid using the edge of the concrete foundation because it could have small imperfections in it. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the line we're going to use. This is where we are going to line up the end of the roof rafter with. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to draw some type of an arrow. Now obviously I'm not suggesting that you use this kind of an arrow, but maybe just grab a pencil or a piece of chalk or some paint so that you're not confusing this point with this point or this point. And of course, this point right here will line up or connect to this one here. And then this point right here will connect to this one here. And since this and this should be the same as this one and this one, I would strongly suggest measuring these points. And that means all four of these sections to make sure that they are the same or at least close enough to be acceptable for you. So let's go ahead and connect the lines together that we have here and you can see that we really don't have a very good design. So let's go ahead and move this line back a foot and see what we get. Now the reason why I showed you the previous example was to give you another idea of how you can easily change this stuff and that means all of these lines except for the center line. And I'm not going to say you can't change that one either because this method right here can provide you with a variety of different roofs without using a lot of different complicated math formulas. And that's the beauty of using this layout and design technique. Next up, let's go ahead and measure all of our parts to make sure that they are all the same size. And again, remember where you're measuring from. And if you come to a component that is not the same size, the first thing you're going to want to do will be to check to make sure that you are measuring from the correct point. And of course that allows you to double check everything and sometimes even triple check everything. And for some of you who might not know what you're doing here, it might be helpful to use a two by four to represent the wall that will be supporting these two rafters here, and even a scrap piece of wood that will represent the ridge and even position it where it needs to be. And you could even position this here and then draw an outline of the ridge and then mark it as such on the floor. And of course you could do the same thing with the wall. And in this case, it might be helpful to do it for the wall so that you don't get confused to as where which side of the line the wall is going to be on. And again, this is just some of the stuff that can be confusing. If you take this and you put it on this side of the line and then you start laying out your roof rafters, you're going to have a problem if the wall is going on this side. So lay out and mark anything that you you think is going to help you figure out the roof rafters along with the wall framing height. Next up, let's go ahead and lay out our two by six. And this board here is going to lay on top of this one here. So we're going to need a scrap board underneath it. And of course, the top of the boards or what will eventually become our roof rafter patterns will need to line up with the top of 
the boards. So not too difficult, right? We're using the top of these lines for the top of our rafters. And for something like this, it might not benefit you to use those lines for the bottom of your rafters. Next up, let's go ahead and draw a couple of lines here so that we can start laying out our roof rafter. And you can see here where we drew the line of the intersecting roof rafter. And of course, we just simply drew a line on the bottom and a line on the top. And feel free to extend this line all the way through if you need to. Next up, let's go ahead and position the wall framing in here or our 2x4 so that we can use it to figure out where these lines are going to go. And then we can go ahead and cut those lines. And in our example here, I'm going to do the bottom section last. However, that's not necessary. You can watch the video and do it at the same time. I'm just not going to do it right now because it can be confusing to what I'm going to be doing. Next up, let's go ahead and place this board on top of this board here so that we can lay out the top rafter. And that won't be too difficult. Let's take a look at lining up the top of the board with the line that we drew. And of course, the bottom of the roof rafter won't be difficult. We're just simply going to trace this and then trace this line here so that we end up with something like this. And of course, that will be it for the layout of the bottom section there. So let's go ahead and head up to the ridge where we will be making a mark on the center at the top and the center at the bottom here. Then we will connect those lines and then measure over half of the distance or half of the thickness of the roof ridge you're going to be using. In our example, we're going to be using a two by eight. We have two by six rafters and we're gonna use a two by eight ridge. And half the distance of the two by eight is going to be three quarters of an inch. And you're simply going to measure over from here three quarters of an inch and draw a straight line or a line that will be parallel to the line you just drew. And once that is done, we have laid out the upper roof rafter. And after we have double checked all of our measurements, we can go ahead and cut everything and then reline it back up to make sure that everything is going to work out. And as always, now would be a good time to double check all of the measurements even though you should have double checked it before you cut everything. Next up, let's position the lower rafter on top of the upper rafter and then just take another look to make sure that everything is lining up like we want it to. And now might be a good time to point out that you can cut these two rafters in a variety of different ways. And I will be providing you with some more examples on that in the future. And then I will create a playlist for all of those videos so that you can go to one place to see them all. So after everything here is looking good and positioned properly, it is time to lay out the bottom of the lower rafter. And the first step for that will be to create some type of a line that that will line up with this line here and represent a horizontal line for the roof framing rafter. That can be used for the rafter to sit on top of the wall framing or even on top of a floor. And with that said, this line might be enough depending upon what type of project you're going to be building. And I will provide you with a little more information on that here in a few minutes. However, our roof rafter is going to be sitting on top of a two by four framing plate. And in order to figure that out, we're going to need to draw some lines to represent the width of the wall framing plate, three and a half inches. And those lines will need to extend past here or be parallel with the outside of the building, as you can see here. And again, that can be done simply by putting a two by four on top of this rafter and drawing your lines or using a framing square and coming off of this line here with a square line and then simply measuring over from that line to get this line here. And of course, once you have these lines, you can simply draw a line off of this one here where it intersects into the bottom of the rafter to give us a nice three and a half inch line we can use to connect the bottom of the roof rafter to the top of a two by four framing plate. However, we are not done yet. 
because we need to measure this distance here so that we can readjust the rafters to their final position by moving the entire roof framing system up four and a half inches or the distance that you would have came up with if you're using this method here. And I hope that wasn't too confusing, but this is one of the best ways I could think of to make all of this work out. And if any part of the video was confusing, then feel free to ask your questions in the comment area or email them to me and I will answer them as soon as possible. So after you have cut this pattern and this pattern, make sure that you write the word pattern on top of these so that you don't ever get them confused or get them mixed up with the other framing lumber because these are the ones you're going to use to simply trace the next boards so that they can be cut into roof rafters. And even though this isn't necessary because these should be the same, you could always cut two more roof rafters and then position everything so that you can measure everything accordingly. Now you also will need to measure the distance from the top of this line to the bottom corner of the roof rafters so that you can figure out the wall framing height. And you can also use this to figure out any additional parts. For example, you might have a ridge beam in here and you might need to know what the height is from the bottom of the ridge beam to the top of the wall framing, which will also provide you with another method to save you a lot of time and frustration if you don't understand complicated roof formulas. And hopefully that makes sense. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ridge where we can see the center of the ridge lining up with the center line of the building and then take a look at the other side and of course another view of it there and bringing us right back back to the other side that would have been raised four and a half inches. And this video would not have been complete if I did not provide you with some type of an example of how these roof rafters and walls were actually going to work. So let's go ahead and take a quick tour before we end the video. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the section that could have been a little wider. I could have used a two by six or a two by eight framing plate and then cut my line straight across here. And then the roof rafter could have sat on top of that. So if it's a little too confusing to lay out for a two by four and you're going to build something like this, then just simply use a wider base plate to match the width of whatever this line would represent. And again, I hope that makes sense. Continue our tour, see how the roof framing rafters are going to lap here. And of course, this can be nailed together. And then you can install some blocks in between that. And not a bad looking gambro roof there. The other side, the ridge and the rafters at the ridge on each side. And you're usually going to use 16 D nails to fasten all of this together. And as always, if you learned something or enjoyed the video, make sure that you let us know by either leaving a comment in the comment area or hitting the thumbs up button or doing both.